takes a little effort, we can work it out. These things go hand in hand, know what I'm talking about. But can we have one without the other, one without the other, yeah. One without the other, one without the other, yeah. We made it through the test, strengthening love and sex. We made it through the test, strengthening love and sex. What's going on, everybody? It is the Spencers, and we're back at we're it. Back. We're back. We back like we never left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's time for the Strengthening Love and Sex podcast, and uh, I don't know what episode we're on. It may be five. I don't know, uh, but we're just glad that you all are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, last week we talked about the five things that block your love, mm-hmm. right? The five love blockers. And I hope that you guys uh, were blessed by that podcast. And we're going a little bit deeper this week and we talk about how to make it last forever. We did a master class on this, but uh, we want to go a little bit deeper into it with you tonight because I believe there's some people out there that want to make it last forever. What about you? I agree. I agree. There are a lot of couples out there that want to make it last forever. Come on. You want to make it last forever? Make- it lasts forever, ever. Don't let our love fade. Keep sweat. Don't be jealous. All right. So we're talking about that tonight. And uh, Rhonda and I have been passionate about helping married couples for a very long time. Uh, because one of the things we recognized when we first got married, we were young. Yes. How young were we? We were so young. Mm-hmm. No, we were 23 and 24 years old. And we thought we knew everything about life and knew absolutely <laughs> nothing. It's, you know, it's amazing to look at our sons now, you know, 19, 22, and 26. 27. Tw- 27. Uh, 23. 23 and 19. 19. Yeah. So what's crazy about it is I look at them, I'm like, They can't be married. (laughs) They don't know nothing. Uh, But it was a different time. It was a different 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 time. time. And the expectations were different. But we kind of bumped our way along. I was so nervous that first day that I saw you because I realized I had no blueprint Mm -hmm. for what a real marriage looked like. Um, We were not virgins um, by any stretch of the imagination, but we were intimacy virgins. Yes. We did not know how to be intimate, how to build a solid marriage. You came from a two-parent home. Uh, I came from a broken home. Uh, I was a product of divorce. And so that made for an interesting mix. You were the youngest of seven. Yes. And I was the oldest of three. Uh, and so we had to figure this thing out. Tell them a little bit about your background. And it, it went dark on us. And I think, okay, there we go. Okay. Uh, tell them a little bit about your background and how you grew up. I grew up with a house full of siblings who thought they were my parents, but they were not my parents. But my parents were great uh, as far as being both both people in the home, making sure that we were taken care of. But as far as them teaching me how to be married, how to be my mom, how to be married, how to be a wife, those discussions never took place. I was brought up Church of Christ and Church of Christ uh, at that particular time, or probably still now, just a little different from where we are now. Conservative. Very. Uh, But... Even with all that, I would see stuff like, that's not right. That's not right. And then I would go looking for additional information because I like knowledge. So when I grew up, learning about sex and those things were not talked about in the home. They weren't talked about at all. And nor did my older sisters, you know, say much to me about it. So everything that I learned, I pretty much learned from my friends and from textbooks. Wow. I'm, I wasn't too far behind you. Um, I grew up in a broken home, rural Kentucky. Uh, address was Route 1, Olmstead. And um, my mom and dad divorced when I was seven. So I had no real blueprint for what marriage looked like. 
right? I had no real blueprint for what a husband looked like. I had no blueprint for how healthy conflict was resolved. I had no blueprint for commitment and faithfulness. It was a lot of incest, adultery, uh, sexual trauma, mm -hmm. and um, I had to figure that thing out. And so what ended up happening is that in my early years, my childhood years, I was molested. That rewired my brain to think that love could only be found through sex. And so I spent much of my adolescence, lost my virginity at 12. And uh, a lot of that um, followed me into young adulthood. And so it wasn't until we got married that you introduced me to what real love looked like. That love and intimacy um, are such a strong foundation to what sex should be about. And so we had to figure that thing out. And, and we didn't figure it out on our own. We had some help. We had some people uh, who helped us and, and guided us, uh, older couples who mentored us. Uh, they gave us some help. We've gotten counseling. We've taken uh, classes. We've been certified. We went through the Sexual Wholeness Institute. And all of those things helped us. And so we want to stop by tonight to just tell you some of the things that we learned. What's one of the things, the first things we learned, babe? One of the things that we learned was that we as women and men, we all have to be comfortable in our own skin. You know, God designed us all differently and uniquely. And so we need to know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. So you don't have to be concerned with, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. If there are some small little tweaks and that's something that you want to to do whether it's losing weight getting eating healthier taking longer walks those are things that you can do to help your inner self and it will show up on the outside so that's one of the things we learned was that uh, we had to be comfortable in our own skin and then you know you know when i first met you we were in college and you how much did you weigh in college in your freshman year i was barely over 100 pounds <laughs> <laughs> I was probably 145. We were both thin, weren't we? Very. Um, I remember you being uh, super thin. And, I was super thin. And yeah, you were super. Come on, babe. I wasn't. I still had. Come to on, babe. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, when did you first get comfortable in your own skin? Because, like, I, we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. We both felt a certain kind of way about ourselves. We didn't like how we looked as teenagers and adolescent. So when did you get comfortable in your skin? I probably got really, really comfortable in my skin, probably in my early 30s. You know, I was finished having children. I like what pregnancy did to my body. It gave me some pounds, and gave some curves. Some curves. Come on now. <laughs> so, you know, I then it was when I was like, oh, I am a woman, you know. Hear me roar. <laughs> absolutely absolutely hear me roar but you know after giving mm -hmm. birth to the boys and watching them and nurturing them that's when I was like you know what mm -hmm. I am what God has designed me to Come be on. you know I am a woman I'm a girly girl from head to toe and so I just had to embrace it all 100 percent yeah I we had to we had to work on that because you know my wife she would get out of the shower and hide herself, wrap up in a towel. And I'm like, I want to see you. Let me see what you're working with. And so she finally, over time, got to the point where she allowed me to ogle her, you know, come out of the shower and walk around naked. And, you know, just today, uh, you know, we had a, we we're finally empty nesters and our son was out of town. And she came through strutting with no robe on. I said, that's what I'm talking about. But it took us an evolution mm -hmm. to get to the place where comfort on skin. Another thing is we had to heal over broken trust. Because we didn't know anything about boundaries, healthy boundaries growing up, uh, we had to we had to repair some, some, some times when we broke each other's trust. We didn't meet each other's expectations. Mm -hmm. And that comes through forgiveness. It comes through counseling. Uh, and so I don't know why this camera keeps going dark, but we're going to keep going. We had to focus on um, how to repair that trust. And forgiveness is a big piece of that. If you're going to make it last forever, you're going to have to learn how to say, I'm sorry. Yes, you have to forgive to live because forgiveness is not for the other person. It is for you. Yeah. 
You know, and trust is the foundation of a Absolutely. healthy relationship. Absolutely. And it, and even if you've broken trust, you can get it back, but you're going to have to work for it. Mm -hmm. You got to show the fruits of repentance. It's not enough to say, I'm sorry. You've got to show it in your changed behavior. Your, your actions must match your words. Another thing that we learned uh, while we were going through our sex, sexual wholeness is that we had to learn to navigate life changes. As we grow older, things change. Our children get older from elementary to college, post-grad. Mm -hmm. We have things going on in our own lives. I had some health issues. I lost a kidney. Mm -hmm. Then our parents are getting older. My dad passed. Um, so, and I've had relatives that passed. And we had to learn to navigate through all of those. And they weren't always easy. I lost my dog on dog. I lost Coco. So, you know, that was hard and trying to make sure that we were still there for each other during those times. Yeah. A lot, you know, I see a lot of couples when they go through major life changes like illnesses or parents aging or um, even empty nesters. Mm -hmm. We almost have to relearn each other. You know, right. as, as you continue to evolve, as we continue to evolve, we have to make sure that we reinvent ourselves that we begin to learn each other in different ways and the beautiful part about life changes whether it's menopause or kids leaving the house is that we have to figure out how to relearn each other mm -hmm. and so that's a beautiful thing is that we keep evolving we also learn new ways to please each other and to ask for the sex that we wanted do you remember that oh absolutely uh, we have to have those conversations like I'm not going to say how, where Stacy was in, um, when we first got, well, okay, he was my number two, okay, as far as partners when we got married. Still, you got to elaborate. Uh, my number two, my se my second uh, sexual partner. So, I from my first okay, sexual partner. Okay, you, you got you to really clarify this because now it sounds <laughs> like you got two sexual partners. No, 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 no. Let's clarify. Okay, please. When I was, you told when you lost your virginity, uh -huh. I lost my virginity at age 16. Okay. That was sexual partner number one. I got you. My life sexual partner, you, no one else, <laughs> no one else. Got you. Okay. You. All right. Okay. okay. Trying to be clear. Let's, let's make it all right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. So, Lord, what was I saying? I'd we got, had to learn how to ask for the sex we want. Yes, because we didn't know, you know, you as a teenager, sometimes as women, we may be pressured into something that we weren't ready to be pressured into, mm -hmm. uh, weren't ready to experience. And so my husband, you, you had to be very patient with me uh, and then learning different things. Yeah. And, and we had to learn how to ask because, you know, in the early part of the state, we did not know how to communicate correctly. We did not know how to communicate adequately. We didn't know how to ask for what we wanted because we didn't want to hurt the other person's feelings. But if you're going to be married and stay together over time, you've got to be able to ask for the sex you want. you got to be able to ask for what you want. And we learned how to do that. Mm -hmm. And so here's some things that we can give you. Three things you can do to make it last forever. Y'all ready? Get your pens and pads out. I want you to write this down. You have to be willing to talk about the elephant in the living room, the elephant in the living room. And so what is the elephant in the living room? It's those things that you know are difficult, but you're afraid to talk about them Okay. because you're afraid you're going to hurt the other person's feelings or it's going to cause some conflict. And so how do we how do we talk about the elephants in the, in the, in the living room? Well, one, you have to develop a that foundation of friendship and being able to talk to each other and speak truth and love and when issues arise to deal with them head on and not not just make it where you're going to sweep the issue under the rug that is not anything that's going to be healthy and that's what contributes to this big elephant in the living room is because you're afraid to talk about some issues that are really you know 
can be life changing, can be detrimental, but can be helpful as well. And so those things need to be communicated when they happen. And the reason I say when they happen is because life is going to continue to happen. And so other things are going to take precedence. And that molehill that's been you've been sweeping stuff under the rug just continues to get larger and larger. And if you don't deal with it, guess what? You're going to trip over it. Yeah. You're going to trip over it. And so the only way to deal with the elephant is what I always say, one bite at a time. you got to excavate. you got to go in and you've got to really deal with what's going on. Yeah. You know, we have so many dysfunctional ways of dialoguing. You know, it's like stonewalling. Mm. Stonewalling is when you are offended and you just shut down. You don't communicate. You don't you don't talk. Uh there's two ways you can deal with conflict. Okay. You can run from it or you stay and you become so emotional that you can't communicate. Uh, and we had to learn how to stay in the moment, not to run away. Right. Not to continue to escalate in anger, but to listen to understand and not listen to respond. Uh, and so what, what are some of the things you learned in order how to better communicate? Well, during uh, learning to better communicate with my husband, <clears throat> I had to realize that I am enough. Now, ladies, you are enough. Regardless of what's happened to you mm -hmm. in your past, you are enough. Your husband married you because he loves you. Yeah. You're in a, in a relationship with a significant other for a long term because... That person loves you. So I had to embrace my own sexuality and discover that, hey, although, you know, it's been some years and I've learned some things that it's OK to be a freak. As long as I'm a freak with my husband, I consider myself to be free. You're not <laughs> so a freak, you're free. I'm free. So you had and then I, I learned that I had to embrace all that I am as a woman and getting in touch with my erotic side. And so that's been a fun journey that we've been on. Yeah, we realized early in our marriage, if we were going to overcome years of miseducation around sexuality, that we were going to have to get some help. Mm -hmm. We didn't do it alone. We talked with older couples. We They walked with us, mentored us into a healthier place. We took classes. Uh, we got certified as counselors. Uh, and so what is the one thing that married couples are afraid to talk about because you're afraid that the discussion is going to be too difficult? Um, we asked some couples this and people said stuff like past hurt, mm -hmm. past relationships, yeah, trauma, bl sexual trauma, blended families, sexual trauma, adultery, finances, finances. And as a matter of fact, there's three things that break up a marriage. Uh, children, the discussion about how you're going to raise them, how you're going to mm -hmm. discipline Money, how you're going to spend your money, how you're going to save money, uh, and sex, yes. how you're going to please one another. And so we're hoping that through this open discussion we're happy, having with you, that you will get the tools on how to navigate through those difficult conversations. The second thing we learned was you have to be intentional on discovering new erotic pathways towards sexual fulfillment. New erotic pathways. Most people are not intentional to keep improving their sex life. Mm. They just settle uh, for boring because they don't want to offend their spouse. And sometimes men, we our pride gets away. Our ego gets away. You ask a brother, man, how's your sex life? Are we good, man? I'm good in that department. We're straight. Okay. I'm not going to argue with you. It's good. But can you say this? That I would love for my relationship to go from good to great. I would love my love life, my sex life to go from good to great. Let me put it another way. If you're on an airplane and we're sitting in coach between two large people uh, and somebody came to you and said, Hey, we want to upgrade you and move you in first class. Would you be argue? Would you argue with the person that offered to put you in first class or would you say, Oh, please upgrade me. Mm -hmm. I believe they would go for the upgrade. Don't you? I agree. Yes. And so Rhonda and I are trying our best to upgrade your sexual experience because sex does not have to be boring. Somebody say it out loud. Sex does not have to be boring. You don't have to settle. You don't have to go through the motions. You can have amazing sex, stay married to the same person and experience love without a limit. But it's going to take some intentionality. It's going to take some work. You got to work on that thing. Absolutely.
Yeah. You, if you were to survey a lot of men in their marriage, they say, we good. I got this. But the truth of the matter is we all got one room in our house and that's the room. What? Uh, for improvement. improvement. Right. Bill Russell, the famous Celtic player, coach. Uh, he's also a new. Um, he played 13 seasons in the NBA and he won 11 championships. Okay. And Bill Russell was quoted as saying, it's Sunday. We've got a game schedule. We got to play. We might as well win. Let me tell y'all this. You're married. You're going to stay married. You're going to be married for a long time. You might as well have great sex. Come on, somebody. You might as well have some great sex. It ain't got to be boring and stale. And, and you know, nobody likes roadkill. We, wanna, we want that thing kicking. <laughs> <laughs> so the third thing we learned was you have to find a community or a tribe of people who want the same thing you want in life. Do y'all have healthy couple friends that you kick it with? People who are trying to stay married? People you can bounce stuff off of? People you can travel with? It's so important to have like-minded people who are trying to do the same thing you are. When you're able to talk about what you need to with people that care about you, it's heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It is. It, it's, it's heaven when couples are in sync. When we're in sync, baby, it's the best thing in the world to be able to sit in the bathtub and talk to you, look you in the eyes and say, you know, that love making session was so great last night. What if we were to try A, B, and C? And to be able to sit in the bathtub with you and to have those in uninterrupted moments is so special. There's nothing more precious than that. When my wife is able to share her heart with me and I lean in into her and not become defensive, she opens up even more. I call you my lotus blossom. Okay. Because the more I nurture you, the more I love you, the more you can trust me, you open up more sexually. And I'm telling y'all that if you can figure out <clears throat> how to tap into your spouse's love language <clears throat> and how to tr get them to trust you more, they open up more. That's absolutely right. And it, it's pure hell when you're in a marriage, when you can't talk about what you need to talk about or talk about your needs. So you feel constricted. Like, I really would like to have a free flowing conversation with my, my husband to tell him, hey, you know, mm, last night that didn't do it for me. Or, you know, when you do this, uh, do you mind doing this by giving him specific uh, feedback? And knowing that in that feedback that he's not going to be take it a kind of way, you know, where he's going to be receptive to what you're saying and want to please you. And so therefore, he will go ahead and do what you're asking of him to do sexually. Yeah. Nobody wants to be in a marriage where you can't speak the truth. Mm -mm, not at all. Uh, your spouse should be your best friend. I like Prince. One of my favorite singers. He used to have a song that says, "If uh, if I was your girlfriend," he says, "If I was your girlfriend, would you would you run to me? If somebody hurt you, even if the somebody was me, I trip on how happy we could be." Please, anyway, he he talked about you know exploring the feminine side of himself so he could be better in tune with his girlfriend's feminine side. It doesn't make you soft to be able to have conversations with your spouse. Mm -hmm. It makes you a better lover. If you can tap into how she feels as a woman and you can tap into him, how he feels as a man. And that takes practice. It takes practice. And it's not just about sex. Sex is the cherry on top of the whipped cream. So it's helping in all aspects of marriage when you can communicate effectively with one another, when you're dealing with the elephant in the whatever room that this particular mm -hmm. elephant is in. Uh, so that it helps all of it. It all comes together. It's pure heaven on earth when you're able to reach new heights of ecstasy and go from not having an orgasm for years and now discovering how to have to be multi-orgasmic. Tell them the first few years of our marriage, we struggled. We didn't know anything about the human anatomy. We were just like two little rabbits just, just humping around. We didn't, we didn't know where anything was. And for years, it's embarrassing. It was not embarrassing because, you know, we've grown. But for years, you didn't have an orgasm. Well, I also learned, yeah, yes, that's true. For years, I didn't have an orgasm from penetration alone. Um, but I also, in my research, learned that there are 80% of women who cannot or do not orgasm from penetration alone. So that's why foreplay is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, foreplay is important and the type of foreplay is important. You just can't 
start foreplay when you get ready to go to bed. Yeah. It's it's it starts the night before actually. So in our early years, Stacy is saying yes, we were very young and naive as far as not knowing the proper functionality of our um, female and male uh, genitalia. Mm-hmm. But we learn how it all works. Like, I didn't have an orgasm for years, but we fixed that problem. <laughs> it's pure heaven on earth when both of us want sex and we both orgasm because our needs in the bedroom and out of the bedroom are being met by each other. It's heaven on earth when you finally find your tribe. When you find those group of friends that you can connect with, people who want to make marriage work, people who want to find out new ways of reaching ecstasy, new ways of loving each other. It's, it's, I can't describe what it's like finding people you fit in with. I think all through our lives, we go trying to find our tribe, our, our niche. And I think strengthening love and sex offers that safe space where Christian couples or people who have faith can come together and say, it's, sex is not nasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's possible to be erotic and spiritual. And there are people out there who want to make their sex lives better and they're not weird. And so that's a beautiful thing. And I think in order to take your love, make it to the next level, you got to find that tribe. It's hell on earth when you just have to sit all pin up with this frustration and you have nobody to talk to. You can't talk about it in your church because people are too conservative and, and oh no, we can't talk about that. You can't talk about it with secular people because they take it too far and they're doing any and everything. So where's the balance? You've got to find that tribe. And so it's time for us to build the best marriages we've ever had. And so how do we do that, babe? Well, what we can do is we can have fun. You can have fun in your marriage. Um, You have to make sure that during this time of having fun in your marriage, not just when you're going on your date nights, those are extra important. Make sure you have a date night every week uh, with your spouse, but also making sure that you find the pleasure in your bedroom. Make your room your own kind of sex cave. Make sure that <laughs> sex cave. You have your your candles. <laughs> I'm not talking about bondage unless you're into that, and I'm not going to judge you. But your candles, your good smelling candles, your nice thread count sheets, um, all of it. Close off the floor. You know, just it just makes for a great ambiance. So if you want to make it last forever, we got two solutions. We're going to boil it down to two things you need. You need some coaches, and you need community. You need some coaching and you need community. You need a community of people and some coaches to help you get your best marriage and the best sex you've ever had in your marriage. You cannot do this by yourself. Can somebody say that out loud? You cannot do this by yourself. We need some help. And I tell you, when Ron and I got help and we got some coaching, when we got some mentors who walk with us, that's when our love life went to a whole nother level. We discovered a whole new world uh, in our marriage bed. It was amazing. And what I discovered is that that 23-year-old young man who thought he was not inadequate, thought he was going to be bored for the rest of his life, that man found a whole new discovery. I found a secret cave uh, in my bedroom with my wife, and it's been amazing, but we had to get some help. We found a community of people that uh, we could hold us accountable and encourage us, and so Rhonda and I want to do the same thing for you. We want to invite you into our inner circle. We want you to be in our inner circle. There's been so many couples who reach out to us uh, and say, hey, do y'all do mentoring? Can you help us? And because we didn't have the bandwidth, we had to say no to so many people. But we sat down and we said, you know what? I want to be intentional about building an inner circle of people who need a tribe Mm -hmm. and who need coaching, who want to invest in their marriage so that we can invest in them. We don't have a lot of time, but we got a lot of knowledge. And what we have committed to do is that we want to commit to those who have taken the time and want to invest in their marriage. So, babe, can you tell them what this whole exclusive community is called? Our, this exclusive community is called Eden Circle. 
So when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they had everything they needed and they were naked and without shame. And we want you to get back to the place where you and your spouse are naked and without shame. We want you and your spouse to be a part of our inner circle. Uh, We want to to save you some time and pain that we went through Mm. as couples one decade trying to navigate through our own personal pain and our journey uh, to discover this liberating space of sexual freedom and passion that we enjoy as middle-aged married couple. Oh my gosh, we are middle-aged. 34 (laughs) years later, we are more in love than we were when we first got married. We discovered that there are different levels to love making, and we want to share with you and download everything we've learned in our inner circle called Eden Circle. So what is Eden Circle? I'm glad you asked that question. You will get a monthly live masterclass where we can continue to go deeper into mastering the art of becoming the lovers God intended you to be. Every month, we're going to have a virtual meet up with just the exclusive group of people who are in Indian Circle. It's not going to be a bunch of people, but it's going to be enough of us to get in a room and have a life-changing conversation once a month. Could you use that? Could you need, Could you utilize some, some people who have been through this stuff, who've lived it, who've learned to download to you every month? I believe you could. And then we're going to have exclusive meetings with Q&A with our Eden Circle community. This will be a private group where you can ask anything without fear of judgment, a safe place uh, with other married couples who are trying to figure out how to make love last a lifetime. And then what else, babe? We will have biannual meetups. We will spend a weekend together out of town and we can meet and talk through some of the issues that we come up just to to share some new trends um, that will help our marriages go to the next level. Then we'll also you'll also have access to a private Facebook page where our Eden Circle Tribe can connect and check in with each other and have exclusive access access to myself and to Stacy. You also have discounted counseling sessions. So many people, I believe my my lawn guy stopped me today. He was like, Pastor, do you do counseling? And I said, some. But for you, as a part of our inner circle, you get discounted counseling sessions. Uh, where you can come in and talk about what you need to talk about with people who've been where you're trying to get past. And then there's a discount on our upcoming international retreat. We got a retreat coming up, uh, two retreats. Actually, we got one coming up in November in Gatlinburg, uh, November the 5th and 6th. And uh, you can go with us to Gatlinburg. And then in June of 2023, we're going to Couples Tower in Jamaica for our international marriage retreat. And we got room for 30 couples because we'll be celebrating 30 years of marriage. And you get a discount on that as a member of the Eden Circle community. You will experience sexual synergy like you've always wanted with your spouse. There's no better feeling in the world than manifesting the full pleasure that is available in your marital union. You'll have a tribe of married married couples who are trying to reach the same goal you are. Can you imagine having a group of friends Mm. that you can skip past all the pleasantries and just talk about real stuff with? Come on. Uh, So those are some of the things that we're offering in our Eden Circle. You'll be able to uh, enter a space where you are finally free to be all that God has created you to be as a spiritual and sexual person. No more false divisions between your saved self and your sexual self. You will become masters of your own sexual understanding, more knowledgeable about your own body and how to please your spouse. Y'all, we want y'all to get to the next level. We want you to be naked and unashamed. Mm -hmm. We want you to make your love last forever. And the way you do that is to become a part of this Eden circle, this inner circle that we're um, we're launching in October. And so you can be the first group to walk with us. And uh, we have a special uh, offer for you. So if you go to TheEdenCircle.com, mm-hmm. TheEdenCircle.com, and check that out and see if you want to become a part of our inner circle and begin this sensual journey toward healing and restoration and sexual freedom like you've never experienced before, I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing. Yes. Yeah, so do you think it's possible to take your marriage from good to great? We think it is possible. Well, actually, we know it's possible <laughs> to take your marriage from good to great. 
So how many of you know that you can't do this alone, that you need some help? And we are here to help. Yeah. So we're excited about where you're headed, where your relationship is here, headed, where your marriage is headed. And then somebody stopped me the other day and said, what about people who are engaged or seriously dating? Mm. <clears throat> the same thing. If we would have known the stuff we oh, know absolutely. now before we got married, we would have saved ourselves about 10 years of heartache. And so we want to give you an advanced head start in your marriage mm. so that you can get these principles early. We want to walk with you. We want to do life with you. We want to mentor you. We want to uh, be there for you when you hit those snags, when you get stuck. Sometimes it helps when you got an unobjective, uh, an objective party unbiased party exactly. to sit down with you and that's what Rhonda and I want to offer you we want to upgrade you let me we want to upgrade you to first class first class out on the floor <laughs> so, <laughs> we want we want to help you to get there and I'll, I will have to go ask my wife about this sex cave that she wants to uh, create I think we'll talk about that on the next yeah, we'll podcast talk about that later. on the next podcast we're going to talk about uh, 10 ways to make sure that your bedroom is not boring. Maybe we got to build us a cave. <laughs> no, we had our own bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we are, we're getting ready to go, but we want to remind you again, if you want to be a part of that international uh, marriage retreat in Jamaica in June, you can reserve your room for a non-refundable deposit of a hundred dollars. And that can, uh, you can go to Eventbrite and look up the Jamaica International Marriage Retreat, Strengthening Love and Sex. And it's going to be amazing. And you can go ahead and put your deposit down before October 30th to secure your room. You can also go to Eventbrite for the Gatlinburg uh, Marriage Retreat. We are one marriage retreat and take your marriage to the next level. That's coming up in the next couple of months. And it'd be a good refresher course mm -hmm. for you and your spouse to come to Mountains of Gatlinburg, very romantic. Um, and intimate and we'll spend some time chatting with you and your spouse linking up with you guys to talk about how we make this thing last forever so you got two opportunities coming up in November and one in June of next year go ahead and take advantage of that but today go to theedensquare.com and register uh, for this inner circle so we can take this thing to the place where God wants it to be. Listen, we love you guys. Thank y'all for tuning in to Strengthening Love and Sex. And if you this podcast has been a blessing, please do us a favor. Make some comments uh, on your uh, whatever uh, platform you're using and share this. Copy the link and share it with all your couple friends, your tribe, so that they can strengthen their love and their sex. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next time. We'll see you guys next time. Strengthening love and sex.